Hello and welcome to Sarah's Texture Crafts. Today I'm going to present to you the first of my video product reviews. Um, many of you who know me from either my website sarahstexturecrafts.com or one of my um, blogs, I write a blog called Crafts of Texture at craftsoftexture.blogspot.com and learn about wool which is sarahstexturecrafts.wordpress.com know that over the last couple of years sporadically I've been asked by publishing companies to um, review books um, I've also been approached by a couple of companies recently to um, review products um, so what I've decided to do is to launch a little video review section this will primarily be based on my blogs um, if it's wool related it will be on the learn about wool website if it is general craft related then it will be on the crafts of texture blog spot and both if if the product is relevant to both I guess I, I kind of need to give you a bit of a disclaimer before we continue um, so essentially the way I work these reviews is more often than not I am gifted the product that I am asked to review I am in no other way monetarily um, compensated for my time and efforts in making these reviews I am not paid in any way to influence the outcome of my reviews any words um, that I write in terms of review or anything that I speak um, on video by way of my um, product reviews are entirely my own view they are not paid or influenced by any third party so I just want you to be assured that you can feel safe that any reviews you watch or read that I have provided you come from me, come from either a place where I have used said product and therefore feel I'm at a level, uh, a level or a stage where I can endorse said product or it might be something that I sell which um, invariably is something that I, I use and therefore endorse. I rarely sell anything that I don't use and understand. And thirdly, it might be something where I have been um, gifted a product in order to review. In most of those gifted cases, I will be passing on the product to you in terms of a giveaway. And that's exactly what I have for you today in the first review. So let me crack on and and get to our first review so I've been gifted this book hand stitch um, perspectives by Bloomsbury publishing this was launched in October 2012 and it is 224 pages and a lovely hardback cover with about 320 colour illustrations that retails for £35 as a hardback. Um, I'm going to be giving this away to you. So if you want to keep watching to find out how you can claim your copy then please do. Also at the end Bloomsbury Publishing have given us a discount code so if you don't get lucky enough to win your copy and would like instead to purchase your copy then I can give you a discount code to get some money off of that so keep watching that will be coming up at the end of the review. Okay so I'm going to start with the press release that I was given by um, Bloomsbury Publishing. So they say Hand Stitch Perspectives by Alice Kettle and Jane McKeating. This is the companion volume to Machine Stitch Hand Stitch Perspectives. It's an essential read and reference for any textile student, practicing embroiderer, designer or artist. Many internationally renowned artists are now employing hand stitch in their work. Each chapter is written by an established and influential maker, embroiderer, artist, academic and discusses hand stitch from a different perspective. Wonderful illustrations of artistic hand stitch, both contemporary and historical, demonstrate this diverse and intimate craft in detail. The contributors draw upon important collections, including the Victorian Albert Museum in London, the Whitworth Art Gallery in Manchester, and the rich archive held by the Manchester School of Art in its extensively, extensively researched and beautifully presented volume. 
so that's the official press release and then I'm just going to read the foreword because I, I felt it was um, quite a quite a good foreword by Anne Hall who is the editor of Embroidery Magazine and she gives us a little bit more detail about you know the idea of the book and the people behind it. So in her foreword she says in the decade that I have been the editor of Embroidery Magazine, I had the good fortune to interview a host of talented people from all walks of the textile world, from artists, students and curators, to collectors, tutors and designers. And I've learnt a great deal from each of them. Embroiderers tend to be universally passionate about their enterprise. Some I would describe as innovators, the devotion resulting in the expansion of new techniques, applications or approaches to embroidery as a creative medium. One such person is Alice Kettle. I studied embroidery at Goldsmiths College in the 1980s at the same time that Kettle was completing her postgraduate diploma. When the end of the year shows arrived I recall the buzz around the college about one of the studio exhibitions. It turned out to be that of Alice Kettle. I recall my, to my amazement and what seemed to be the amazement of the entire art department at the ambitious scale of the work and sensitive interpretation of the subject matter. I gained a new perspective on machine stitching that day. Alice Kettle is now a research fellow at Manchester School of Art, Manchester Metropolitan University, MMU, in which the genesis of this book was firmly rooted. Many influential embroiderers have passed through the school whether as students, technicians, research fellows or tutors. Anne McKeating, now Director of Studies there, is one such person. Over the years she has continued the work begun by Professor Anne Morell in shaping a highly successful programme area that is dedicated to developing embroidery with every, within every imaginable arena. It is thanks to Jane's tenacity that the embroidery discipline continues to thrive within the new programming. This she manages while continuing to, to develop her own artistic practice, which focuses on hand embroidery. Jane exhibits widely and her work continues to earn awards and admiration of her peers within the textile world. Over the years, those who have passed through MMU have consistently contributed to a canon of traditional and contemporary embroidery practice. Perhaps less known outside the university is the unique teaching collection made up of samples of embroidery that have been collected from students and tutors since the 1960s. This rich resource promoted the publication, sorry, this rich resource prompted the publication of machine stitch perspectives in 2010, very much a sister compendium to this new volume dedicated to hand stitch. Nearly all of those who work within hand stitch talk of the importance in their creative journey of handing down of hand stitch by mother, aunt or teacher. Many revel in the pleasure of working with their hands in an age of overarching technology. They delight in the simple act of working a piece of stitch in the hand. The intimacy and immediacy of working this way conjures a kind of magic. There are no interventions and no interruptive processes, no preparation or machine required. Many mention the almost meditative effect of stitching. Others speak the pull on their senses, the sound of the needle as it plucks or stabs the canvas, the distinctive smell of a particular cloth, the feel of starched linen or the roughness of sucking, those fibres that stick to the back of the throat. There are layers of meaning within each recollection and each connection, so many stories and so many perspectives. In hand stitch perspectives, all the contributors, most of whom have links to the embroidery area in Manchester School of Art, bringing years of accumulated knowledge and insight to bear their interpretations of the reach and potential of hand stitch. In short, each offers a unique perspective. The last decade has taught, if the last decade has taught me anything, it is the exploration of new perspectives of all forms of embroidery, traditional and contemporary, past and present, is a vital part of keeping the humble hand stitch alive. That was written by Joanne Hall, editor of Embroidery Magazine. And I wanted to um, read that to you just because I, I think a, a well-written foreword is extremely important to sort of introduce the book. Um, it gives you an idea not only of where they're coming from, 
but also in terms of what you might find within the book. And looking through the pages of this book so far, um, it does appear to me to be a really wealthy resource for art reference in terms of the hand stitch and there are some really great pieces in here. So I thought I would show you some of the illustrations of the book and um, just to give you an idea of the kind of reference material that's in there. Um, I have found that it's a really nice um, balance between very uh, a very artistic look at hand stitch, um, hand stitch used to create form, hand stitch that helps to reflect the beauty of the fibres that are used and um, you know sort of contemporary techniques that make it very much more than the essential hand stitch that we use in our everyday lives and lift it to a, a very artistic and, and almost modern art um, sort of arena. So this is the first one and this is a self-portrait um, by Erin Short which is just lovely isn't it? And on there you can see her use of um, straight stitches in cruel wool on Welsh flannel and that is from the collection of the National Library of Wales. And what I particularly love about this is um, cruel work in, in hand stitch is a very very old um, tradition in, in hand stitch and embroidery but this is used in a much more modern way um, and even though it's, it's um, using a needle and thread you still get this extremely painterly effect um, and it's, it's very lifelike to look at so I loved that one I thought I definitely had to show you that one let me see what else I liked the, there was another section um, which is called Sound, Light and Air um, and they look at stitch in a much more sort of um, modern way if you like and this is a piece by Janet Ecclesman which is made using spectra fibre which is um, a highly tensile polyester and just with clever use of lighting this one With clever use of lighting it catches lots of, of shadows and light projections that come off of this polyester fibre. It's obviously quite um, highly reflective as well. Um, and I just think it's such a, a unique and very modern way of looking at fibres and using hand stitch. Um, so that, that's a really nice section to the book. And then also I like the reference to fashion. I mean I'm, I come from a fashion and textile background so to me this was really um, quite important. So this is a piece by Agnes Emma Richer um, and it's a, uh, an old jacket from the late 1800s which is embroidered with um, autobiographical text. And I think that's fantastic using, um, you know, old clothing and hand stitching onto it to make it something new, make it something quite arty. And that's, it's something that you could take into your crafts as well. So you could use elements from this book to inform your own pieces of work. And maybe it, that's crafts that you um, go on to sell or it's, it's things that you just fashion for yourself. Um, and I really like the idea of that. And then to sort of contrast against that, they had another um, historical piece, um, which is um, an ethnic piece um, from Rio de Janeiro. And that's this embroidered jacket here. And the detail on that is absolutely amazing. But you can see it's a very similar idea. OK, it's not autobiographical text. There is some text on here. Um, but this is probably um, maybe uh, using hand stitch to pictorially document um, a scene or you know some sort of 
idea from history or something like that. So it shows how hand stitch has, has been more important to us in a in a in an art and historical documentation form um, than just a practical form. It's not just about sewing a button on a shirt, a name tag in the back of a jacket. Hand stitch can be used to document so many things. I mean, look at the the Bayer tapestry. That's hand stitch, and it documents very clearly um, a, an historical moment. Um, so hand stitch is, you know, has not only a very historical meaning to us, but I think it, it's also great that it now transcends into that, you know, sort of art world. Um, and this is another piece by Arthur and Martha, which is um, from 2011, and this is their take on using hand stitch. I guess a play on, you know, the kind of social, social um, sort of take on, on hand stitching and, and hand stitching historically was a huge part of um, of lives, you know, whether it be to document certain things or whether it be something that, that ladies do while gentlemen drink in the, um, you know, in the dining room and and it would be a, a, a social a social thing so I really like that and I also like at the back they've got a glossary of stitches and these are stitches um, from some of the historical pieces that they have in, in the collections that this book is based on so it's quite nice um, that you've got this um, very sort of arty glossary of stitches normally in the back of hand stitch books you get um, you know a very pictorial and basic view uh, you know of, of whatever um, is carried through from from the book itself and this is quite nice because everything they're using here is very much from the archives that they refer to so I, I think it's a really nice um, sort of reference book it also gives you a bit of information about the main artists who um, were were used um, within the book um, and, and who helped to write the book. So um, yeah, I mean I think it's a really nice coffee table book and if you have a particular interest in hand stitch and embroidery then this is something that you might like to think about purchasing for yourselves. So that is Hand Stitch Perspective written by Alice Kettle and Jane McKeating and that's by Bloomsbury Publishing. As I say the book retails for £35. Now Bloomsbury have been very gracious and given us a bit of a discount code so they are offering a 20% discount on all purchases. Um, these I don't have a time frame on that, so I'm, oh yes I do, I'm sorry, the time frame on that is the 18th of February 2013. Okay, so you've got a few months to claim your 20% discount. The 20% discount code, and I will run that across the bottom of the screen here, is GLR8FE. And to be able to claim that 20% you need to order through their main distributor which is macmillan.co.uk and you can phone them on 01256 302 699 or email them direct at macmillan.co.uk and that information will be at the bottom of the screen there for you. If you're in the UK, that discount code also entitles you to free postage and packaging, so that is an extremely good offer. Unfortunately, because the book is quite so heavy, it's it's um, almost a kilo and a half, um, overseas will have to um, pay for postage and packaging, but you still get your 20% off, so that's a really good deal. If you would like to win a copy of the book, of this book then please go to my blog 
craftsoftexture.blogspot.com that information along the bottom of the screen there for you craftsoftexture.blogspot.com find the giveaway tab at the top of the screen and this giveaway will be listed what I want you to do and what I thought would be really quite interesting not just for me but also for you is to enter a comment on the relevant post and answer this question how has hand stitch impacted your crafting so that is how has hand stitch impacted your crafting and I just thought it would be quite nice for us to you know maybe learn a bit about each other if you want to link to your own blog um, where you show crafts and, and things that you've maybe used hand stitch on then that's fine please do so um, but if I could have all of those entries in by the 4th of February I will later that day or early the next day be closing that competition and picking the winner now I will be posting only within the UK so if you're overseas you can feel free to leave a comment but unfortunately you won't be eligible to win again that is because of the cost of postage at almost a kilo and a half um, it will cost me a lot to post a book to you even as a prize um, with future um, giveaways I will certainly try to include worldwide postage where I can but with this one I'm afraid um, the weight of the book dictates um, that it will be a UK only um, prize winner. So again, if you'd like to win a copy of the book, please contact me via Crafts of Texture by leaving your comment and details on the relevant giveaway. I will have all of the information on the giveaway there as well so that you can um, get the ISBN number so you can have a look and see where you can get the best deal and I will also give you that discount code again and the closing date for the discount code so you know where and how to claim your 20% discount and free UK shipping. And that's it for today so thank you very much for um, watching my first product review and I shall be back to you soon with something new and exciting for review. Okay, thank you.